Hello everyone, welcome! I'm S. Dan Wolf. This is episode 2 of Wilderness Springs, and I am having an absolute blast building this park. Um, you know, like we like we'd mentioned in the first uh, episode, that I, I'm just more of like a... Uh, a fantasy type builder. I, I usually I don't even I I very rarely build parks. Um, you know I'm just more really the, the I get more enjoyment from the game kind of like just creating scenes or little food shops, gift shops, and just kind of weird blueprints and stuff that that you know really. I kind of would just use once, maybe just for some pictures or a video, and then never really touch it again. But with this particular park, um, I totally have skipped over that and, and, and just really wanted to focus on the realism and wanted to make it a Dollywood, you know, wilderness type of park. And it's, it's coming along pretty cool. I, uh, I have a lot of ideas flowing. You'll see by the end of this, we actually, um, I've got three rides added. And, um, you know, right here, I'm just kind of uh, bulking up on the, uh, kind of like the main emporium, right? When you pass through the security, right when you come in through the park, um, through the turnstiles, this is kind of what you're, what you, what you'd first be looking at. Now, here in a few minutes, you'll notice off to the left, I brought in one of my old restaurants from this park's uh, sister park, Geyser Springs. I brought in Calhoun's, so you'll see that, um, you'll see that here in just a few minutes. But that's another thing. Really, um, one of the last actual parks I worked on. Um, had to be over, I mean, not counting the water park because yeah, that's a park, but technically it's just like, um, it's really just like a big scenery map because nothing can really be used except the monorail. Um, so I wouldn't really consider that like a full on, you know, actual guests are allowed in it type park like geyser spring was and like adventure point was but i've just um nowadays i have um you know spent so many hours playing this game and have gotten so much practice in i'm i'm really getting a sense of what you know aesthetically looks good and what does it and you know like even down to what kind of vegetation can you mix together um all of that over just a lot of trial and error, even doing a lot of these little, um, you know, these little one scene type builds. Um, I've kind of started learning different patterns and, and different mixing and matching options that look good. Um, specifically too, when it comes to facades, I, I've learned um, what pieces you can mix and match together and what pieces just don't work. And um, so that's kind of what I've brought to the table with this new park with Wilderness Springs. It's kind of like a culmination of a lot of different, um, just trial and error. Um, like I mentioned before, it, it's um, Wilderness Springs, I think will be my best project since the release of Planet Coaster, just because I have grouped all of what I know works and what I know, um, what I know you guys like to see. And this is kind of like a year of practice put to the test. Um, and it's really neat that it's kind of uh, another test for me as far as I don't have the fantasy element to really fall back on. Like, if I don't design something in this park right, I know you guys will call me out on it because it, we're going for realism here. It's kind of hard to call me out on a fantasy build because that is more... Um, you know, that's more of your interpretation and your imagination. So no one can really tell you, well, that look, that doesn't look right. Now, there would never be a dragon flying on top of a, a spaceship arcade. You know, see, you I mean, you, you understand what I'm trying to say that, um, it just lends itself to, um, th this type of build lends itself to making me be more accountable and just more real and uh, and more authentic on these builds. And I think that's what's so fun about it. Usually when I build, it is just, um, you know, kind of a long just trial. You know, I'll go back to the trial and error process um, with r no real consequences. It's just, okay, well, that doesn't look good. Just go ahead and take that off and let me put this spaceship engine 
um, you know, on top of this tower and see how that looks. Well, you know, when you go for these more hyper-realistic, believable builds, um, you really have to set back. I even caught myself today. I'm probably, probably won't see it until episode three, but there's a, there's a couple little, a bit of an expansion I tried to start and I really had to stop myself. You know, I was really like, no, stop, slow down. <laughs> Let's back up. Let's take a look at this whole area in general. And I really had to tell myself why this didn't work. Like if we're going for normal budget, um, hometown park, you know, you can't just start running off with the giant, you know, spinning hyper coaster. You know, <laughs> I really had to, um, like I said, step back and just kind of slow my roll a little bit um, because I over here off to the left, I was getting a little too crazy. Don't even know if I'll put that in the time lapse in episode three because it was really, um, like I mentioned before, it was kind of me stopping myself um, from my you know, over the top fantasy type, uh, tendencies, I guess would be a good, good word. And really, um, stopping myself from, from that is really what led into the barn store using the barnstormer, uh, blueprint that I made a long time ago, never actually used it in a park. And I really modeled that off of Dollywood's barn stormer. And, um, it's got two accompanying rides with it. And, um, well, you know, we'll get to it here in a minute and you'll see, I've kind of um, you blend it in like red pieces of concrete to kind of tie the whole area in together. This right here is kind of what I was messing around with. Um, just I wanted like a, a covered seating area in front of Calhoun's that you'll see me place here in, uh, in just a second. But really, um, like I said, stopping making my dialing myself back is really what leads to the whole um barnstormer area that you're going to see in a minute and and you know what we'll do is um here once this once this little bit of time lapse footage is over didn't get a whole lot of time lapse footage only about 13 minutes um i, I really um really kind of sped through it some of it i even actually i i, I really uh, was kind of kicking myself because i was going back and forth between um these different builds on this area and one of the builds i probably I probably was building on it for probably a good 34, 35 minutes, never clicked record. So yeah, I was really, um, <laughs> really couldn't believe I, uh, I wasted that 34 minutes. So you might see here in a few minutes where a bunch kind of just busts in on you at once. You know, I'm sorry about that. I know you guys like to, to see this step by step and piece by piece, but sometimes if, you know, if I'm just on a roll and I'm going in and out between edits and, and, you know, you know how sometimes the recording goes, any of you YouTubers out there, um, sometimes it just gets away from you. <laughs> and um, this was just kind of one of those deals. So uh, unfortunately, I've uh, lost about 34 minutes of what was going to be pretty cool time lapse footage. But here's what I was talking about. I think it, that using this, um, the red, uh, the concrete roof pieces, but changing them red, and I actually do it across the path here in a minute, really ties in this whole area, almost like a, a, a really cool um, fairground uh, type carnival area. You know, it'd be really cool. Um, I even thought about like um, bringing in either rubles or um, geekisms um, like some of their uh, midway games over in this section. It may still be able to, um, you know, here in, in another episode, maybe push this hill back a little bit, but you, you can, you'll see here in a minute, I was really able to fill this area in really well. And actually a thing that I learned um, just on this build just this afternoon was matching the concrete um, from each side of the path really brought this together um, a lot better than just if I would have left it how I normally leave it with just kind of um, the foliage kind of taking over. Um, but bringing that bringing that red concrete to each side of this path really makes it a cohesive type of area. 
and um, it, it, I, I think it worked out killer. And also, too, you see the little the guests kind of went over to that Vista point. I kind of wanted to do like they have in Dollywood, where um, the, the, a lot of people will go around. If you've ever been to Dollywood, where um, Barnstormer is, there's a little plot that they leave open. There's no trees, and you can stand there and actually watch Barnstormer, um, you know, go up and down. So left that little area open as a Vista point, and that worked out really cool. Here's another thing. This part I love about these realistic builds. Just spending this time right here was so cool. Making a um, an employee sidewalk and a little employee um, hidden path right here. So I went with the really kind of green fence I'm um, really kind of earth tone um, I put some rocks on the other side of this fence and trees so the uh, I didn't really want to um, you know you want to try to not break the illusion for the guests um, you know as much as possible but I needed to make it realistic like these the workers would have to get back there to access the back of the ticket booth and there's some management offices in there and I thought it would be really cool to have their own little sidewalk that um, kind of weaved its way back in there and then of course you see the two rides this is in between that footage I lost but got these two rides put in and when I add in this foliage and these um, these red pieces of concrete it really just sets this area off and um, it's another another example of when I make myself like I mentioned take my time don't start jumping off to areas when you have other areas that aren't finished um, and that is kind of what happened here. Um, I just kind of paced myself, slowed everything down, told myself, uh, stopped a bunch and just looked, gazed around, told myself, okay, what can we add to this whole carnival vibe type area? And um, yeah, you'll see we got another seating area that goes in over here. And it just worked out really cool. I've got the whole uh, back lot sidewalk where the, like I said, the employees will access the ticket center totally back there out of the way. And, you know, that brings me kind of to another point where, you know, the Disney back lot area is totally unnoticeable. Like with Disney, there is nothing that... Um, that they don't that you see they don't want you to see so with their facades and the way their gates and doors and stuff work you never see any of that stuff well with these dollywood type builds and the type of build that i'm doing here they they definitely have their hidden areas but you also have it to where if you wanted to see where their stuff is going on at and some of the back behind the scenes stuff it's still open like they don't totally have it closed off and so that is what was kind of cool about this i've got it hid from the guests but if you look over you see that green wall kind of blending in and you can see the cast members because obviously you know we're not going to have tunnels running underneath this whole park but you can see where the cast members would go in through that door and go to their shift and start over um at the ticket booth um, at that ticket booth area and um, and you know I just thought that that just worked out really really cool to have that semi hid but still to a point where you know hey oh that's where the you know that's where the uh, the cast members and stuff go look at that door right there so anyways let's go ahead um, I know it's kind of a shorter time lapse this time but we can spend a little more time kind of flying around in real time with you guys and I can, uh, let's go ahead, I'll show you some of the layout and slow this down and see what you guys, uh, see what you guys think of this new area. I'm really excited, really kind of giddy and proud of, uh, of how this first little realistic park is turning out. So uh, yeah, let's just flip over to the, uh, to the uh, real time real quick. Hold on one sec. All right, guys, and yes, as you can see, uh, we have definitely branched out a little bit from uh, episode one. We've kind of uh, we've got our first little um, first little area uh, finished up over here, kind of like your little you know the areas anchored, um, like I said by the uh, by the barnstorm uh, barnstormer ride I put together. I'm um, you know based on uh, ba based off the one in Dollywood. So come see the the dueling daredevils.
And yeah, so with the red concrete and, um, you know, the red barn, I just think everything just tied in really, really well um, in this corner. And it's also, I thought it was kind of cool that even if you're walking in and getting your tickets, you the hills still kind of hide everything on that side of the park, except for getting you really hyped for seeing, um, you, you know, obviously you'll be able to see Barnstormer um, in the background, even if we're... Uh, if we're way down here on the guest level, they will uh, they'll be able to see that, and I think that would be really exciting to um, just to get over here and um, and you know make your way through security. And I suspect there'd be a lot of people that once they uh, once they get here, they will totally pass up the gift shop, make their way over to this first bridge, and um, yeah, just kind of get over into uh, Barnstormers area. So. I thought that would be really cool. Um, have a name for the creek as well. I thought it'd be really cool um, to name this creek after my grandpa. So this is going to be Homer's Creek. Um, my grandpa's actually not with us anymore, but he used to love to, um, you know, he'd come downstairs and he'd watch me play um, RCT3 back in the day. And, you know, he would just really, uh, really get a kick out of, um, you know, just I remember the only game he could ever play on a computer was um, was solid solitaire and he would play it for like hours and then you know i would kick him off and we'd we'd sit there and play roller coaster tycoon um uh, three so i definitely know that he would um get a kick out of this game and i'm sure he would uh be just as thrilled to watch me play it now as i am to play it so we will name this creek uh homer's creek after him papa wolf and uh, so, yeah, that's kind of what I'm going with that even started. Um, I didn't get this. This will probably be in episode three, but um, I even did like this little um, area, this almost like small little um, waterfall area where the creek's kind of a little higher up there and breaks its way down. And we also have some groundskeepers that definitely aren't. Uh, aren't on top of things right now because we have a tree that has fallen down in the creek so I have to get on those guys for that but yeah so you know just to give you a rundown if you didn't get a chance to catch episode one um this is the main area of flight or fight uh, gamer gave me a good idea probably be a really neat to go ahead and put like a park map right here and also um just some directions you know security main entrance uh to the left uh ticket counter to the right so um you know shout out to her for that pretty awesome um suggestion we'll definitely have to um, maybe get one of you guys when this is done to do me I know a lot of you guys are really into the uh, to Photoshop and can make me a really cool uh, you know park map maybe when all this is done I can uh, I can get one of you guys to do that for me and uh, and you know bring you onto the channel and and give you a big shout out and uh, I know uh, that would probably end up being really really cool but nonetheless um, like I said once you get your tickets you run through security, got the security tables here, go through your turnstiles, present your ticket, and then you are essentially here. You're in the main square. You've got Calhoun's off to the left. It's kind of like my wilderness, wilderness uh, slash Cracker Barrel type uh, restaurant over off to the left when you first come in. And then you have the, uh, the, the kind of the main... Um, well, I'm probably still going to beef this up a little bit, and maybe put a big W up on here somewhere, but it's kind of like the main gift shop. It's got a just a memento um, and loony balloons in it. You make your way a little farther down. You've got a little pizza pin off here to the side. You've got the wilderness fire department, um, you know, making sure everyone's safe, watching, you know, keeping everything on watch there. Then you've got your little pip shot. Uh, stop in there and grab your grab your uh, grab your pip shot going down through there and this is just more kind of back area I have to work on over in here then you actually have the third bridge crossing um, that will kind of get more into episode three once we move uh, out that way and even brought in Oasis Canteen here as well so this is um, after you if you move past Barnstormers area and all that you have a uh, essentially a funnel cake uh, stand right here so um, you know Wilderness Springs is a uh, is a Coca-Cola property so you'll have to settle for Coke root beer Sprite um, at Wilderness Springs so but yeah guys I just wanted to um, just I wanted to like I mentioned in the time lapse, just 
make myself, um, you know, slow down and really theme out these areas and, um, and, and, you know, just give them a lot of thought. And um, I think this first area, making myself slow down, has worked out really, really well. And um, so we'll just kind of keep going with it. I know it is um, almost time to probably go ahead and start thinking first roller coaster. Um, you definitely, in most parks, like especially Dollywood, you have to walk a good ways before you get to your first coaster. I believe even like, okay, when you first walk into Dollywood, you'd have to go up, you know, Thunder, it might be a close tie between Thunderhead and Lightning Rod, but Thunderhead, when you're going up to Wilderness Pass, you have like all those switchbacks. So I would think that maybe Lightning Rod is a hair closer to the entrance, but still a pretty good walk. So I was thinking even back here... Um, could be a good first area. Um, like I said, we want to go lower budget, small footprint type of, uh, you know, small footprint detailed theme uh, type coaster. So maybe over behind Barnstormer, uh, maybe a good good little area over here because I, I'd be constrained with the park line right here. So I wouldn't go too huge but the coaster would still be sort of hidden by the by the big burr of land and it would obviously be hidden by barnstormers facade um got a lot of tree coverage so yeah maybe back over there would be a good place for like maybe a mind i was thinking i wanted to go mine train um even if it's the swinging kind of vacoma style um the, the swinging carts they've given us now um, I think that might be a good spot because the, you've got to travel, you've got to walk past a lot of gift shops and a lot of, um, of, of food and merch sale opportunities to get back to that first, um, get back to that first, uh, coaster. And even if you're, if you're just coming into the park, you can access it from that bridge. Or if you're coming, um, later, if, if you've been here for a while and you're coming from what will eventually be the back sections of these parks, of this park, um, you'll have this top bridge that, um, that can, that can kind of funnel you both, um, both to it over, uh, Homer's Creek. So we'll just kind of have to see how that plays out over there. But other than that, guys, yeah, I am, uh, I am completely stoked to keep working on this. I actually wish I didn't have to go to work, real work, tomorrow because uh, that is kind of going to bit going to put a big dent in my Planet Coaster day. But um, good news is I'm off Friday, so I've got a big three day weekend coming up, and um, don't really have any plans. Dollywood closes tomorrow. It doesn't o it doesn't reopen again until the Festival of Nations starts, like March seventeenth. So I'm um, going to, you know, not really have a chance to go down there. Um, really, really can't wait to get some vlogs going from Dollywood this summer and this spring, especially with the new, if you haven't heard, look up on Coaster Studios channel. They're doing a massive land expansion uh, clearing, I should say, in Dollywood right now, um, right behind Thunderhead and, um, you know, River Battle, all of that is gone, but it is a massive land clearing going on behind Thunderhead and, uh, you know, kind of like that Fire Chaser Express Wilderness Pass type area. So um, no official announcement from Dollywood on that yet or what in the world they're doing back there but uh, I think that it's going to lead itself to a really exciting end of 2018 um, you know obviously probably nothing will be ready until 2019 or or 2020 so I think it's pretty cool like Dollywood's little tiny jab at Star Wars land and and Toy Story land if they can kind of get that going uh, by uh, by 2019 when um, of course we all know uh, Star Wars land is uh, is supposed to uh, actually open at both parks. So probably Disneyland will be about three months ahead of uh, of Disney World. But um, nonetheless, but yes, I am uh, rambling now. So uh, I will go ahead and get on out of here. Let me know what you guys think about episode two and be on the lookout later in the week, probably towards the weekend, uh, because like I said, I got to go back to work Wednesday, Thursday. Um, you know, just uh, that kind of don't won't have a lot of time when I get home to uh to planet coaster it up but um yeah be looking for episode three 
probably this weekend. Maybe maybe look forward to it um, Saturday morning sometime, I would, I would suspect. So anyways, guys, like I said, I'm S. Dan Wolf. Smash that like button if you end up enjoying this video. Subscribe for more Planet Coaster content, and I will catch you guys in episode three. Thank you. See ya. Hey!